Hey what's up guys, Sedge here, welcome to a new video. Now before I start the video I just quickly wanted to let you guys know that this guide is primarily focused on helping the newcomers, maybe from Dark Souls 3 or just in general newbies that are new to PvP. If you'd consider yourself a PvP veteran or even remotely good at PvP then this video might not be for you, however you still might find something useful in it. Uh, also wanted to give uh, Free Stampede a quick shout out for helping move this video, so if you want to check out some pretty advanced PvP, go check his channel out, it's in the description. Anyway, hope you enjoy guys. So as many of you may know, backstabbing in Dark Souls 1 is a lot different than any other Souls game. When it comes to PvE, it is relatively simple and to understand and make use of, but backstabbing in PvP is a lot more complicated and it's generally one of the main aspects that puts a player off when it comes to PvP, simply because they just don't get a decent chance to enjoy the PvP or even understand what's going on during an invasion, because they're constantly getting backstabbed and killed, eventually to a point where they just say, you know what, fuck it, fuck this shit PvP, it's garbage. I don't want to play this anymore. And if you can relate to this, then I'll show you some quick tips to counteract backstab fishing and pivot backstabs. These are the two main noobish backstab tactics that are commonly used. If you learn how to perform and counteract them, then these can be very effective if your opponent lacks skill and understanding. They are definitely not the only ones, but I won't be covering the more advanced backstab techniques in this video, since this is purely for beginners and I don't want to overcomplicate things. So what is backstab fishing? I'm sure if you've been invading for some time now you'll have seen a player fully decked out with Havel's armor, stone armor, maybe even black iron armor, basically any armor that provides a lot of poise. And the majority of these players have a tendency to circle around you to get to your back. Or in other words, fish for a backstab. And if you're a newcomer you might think the logical thing to do is to attack them while they try to get behind you. Well you'd be wrong because their poise allows them not to get staggered which means they can simply walk behind your back and punish your hit and win the trade-off since their backstab will most probably do more damage. Now I'm going to play a clip of what you're actually supposed to do when you see somebody trying to fish for a backstab with a large amount of poise. As you can see, my opponent starts to pivot to the left which means he is trying to fish for a backstab. If I hit him, he will get the backstab because he has so much poise. So what you need to do is also pivot to the left and then you actually end up behind his back and punish his attempt to backstab you. Now putting this technique to use in an actual PvP battle can be pretty hard if you're inexperienced. Especially since this technique requires a lot of timing and it can be quite hard to put to use when you're under pressure during a fight. But do not be afraid to die at the expense of learning and improving this technique. Eventually it will become instinctive and you will easily be able to tell what your opponent is trying to do by their movement. Now a pivot backstab, if put to use correctly, can mean the difference between winning and losing a fight. I've personally been in many situations where I'm on low health and my opponent is absolutely dominating me. However, more often than not, your opponent will get sluggish and cocky since they think they have the fight in the bag. But in reality, most of them don't realise that a single backstab could cripple their odds of winning. Now to perform this technique you have to be in a certain situation. As I said, this usually occurs when my health is low and the opponent is getting cocky. Run away so that there would be just some distance, not too far but just enough. At this point most invaders will assume you're trying to heal which will cause them to panic and they'll start to rush at you. Now as soon as you see that your opponent's getting quite close, you want to either pivot to your left or your right. I personally like to pivot to my left, just because of preference, but it doesn't really matter. And then just like last time, you will end up behind them and you can punish their cockiness. Now counteracting this technique is actually very easy and a lot of you probably have realised how easy it is now that I've showed you what actually happens, but a lot of people don't really realise because uh, the way I showed you, it's a little bit exaggerated, but it's essentially the same thing and shit happens like that very fast and people don't really get the time to react or really think about it. 
uh, but really the way you counteract it is just don't run at people boldly no matter what health you're at uh, just take it carefully of course instinctively most people will run at people and try to do the r1 uh, because they think they might heal but personally i would either pull out a spear or I would get a bow and arrow, though if your build doesn't support that then just very carefully approach them. If you feel like it's necessary to run because they will heal, just run, but as soon as you get quite close to them, step back and just calm down. Put your shield up and make sure your guard is up, because you never know what people can pull on you. So at this point you have a decent idea of how to counteract the two main backstab techniques commonly used by people. With some practice you will get a lot more proficient, so use this video as a leaping point, not a guarantee that you will be a good PvPer. Now that we have the backstabbing out of the way, let's talk about something that will definitely make you a better player, or at least increase the chance of you becoming a better player. This is usually the biggest problem people have when it comes to PvP, and it's perfectly understandable since it's not something you learn instantly. But it's very important, and that's the build. By having a shitty build, you are limiting your potential because you either don't have enough health, stamina, defense, or you're just simply not doing enough damage to your opponent. And I think it's pretty obvious to say that things like these will discourage anybody from fighting. Nobody wants to go on a game and die instantly because they don't do enough damage and they don't know what the problem is. I'm here to tell you how to solve this problem, what base statistics you need for a decent, at least half decent build that will do enough damage and whatnot. There is a website called Munja Monkey, and I fully advise you go check it out if you want to make your own builds. And I will be using Munja Monkey to show you what I feel the base statistics of any build should be. So whether you're making a magic build, a Murakumo build, a katana build, whatever, dex, strength, anything, I feel like you should definitely use these base statistics. As you can see, with the base statistics that I have chosen, you are only level 55, so this gives you a good... 65 maybe even 70 levels to play around and you can definitely create a very good build with that amount of levels left if you're wondering why i'm saying left is because you should definitely not go above 135 if you are trying to pvp you will not get any games and you will just there's no point there's just no point going above that so i definitely advise you to not go over 135 if you are trying to pvp most people say go for 125, but I myself use 135 builds and I see no problem with it. That's the meta. That's what the meta means. It's what level you're supposed to be. So let me tell you a little bit about the foundation stats. I'll start off with the Ring of Favor since it's not actually a statistic, it's an item. And it might be a little bit weird that I'm recommending you to use an item when I should only be giving you levels. But the Ring of Favor is one of the best rings, if not the best ring in the game. And if you don't use it, then you're going to miss out on a lot of a lot of free stuff like health, stamina, equip load. And there's really no other ring that I would recommend over this. You already have an extra ring slot that you can switch from Hornet to Grain to Wolf if you need it. So there's really no point in having two rings and without one of them being the Ring of Favor, basically. You have 37 Vitality to give you the optimum health. I would not go anywhere lower than 1,500. Uh, preferably if you have like 1,800 or even 2,000, which you can accomplish with the Mask Mother, that's why a lot of tryhards use it, then that's probably the best, and you will know that health and stamina is not limiting you in your fights, because a lot of people seem to think it's a good idea to invade as a level 50, as a level 60, 70, but in reality you should only be PvPing if you have a properly finished PvP build, which is 125 or 135. And again, you have the 40 Endurance to give you the absolute maximum stamina along with the Ring of Favor, which is 197. You cannot get any higher than that, so again, you will know that stamina is not limiting you in fights. And having all of these things will just make you a better player because it will give you a chance. You won't be going into the forest and getting one-shotted by people. 
I've had plenty of people who have invaded me and I just backstab them once and they die because their build are their builds are just bad. Like there's no way to sugarcoat it. The builds are just shit. So I am not I mean I'm not having some sort of rant right now because that's not the point of the video, but please make sure your builds are at least level 100. I understand that it's not easy to get souls nowadays. Um but yeah, just make sure you are completing your build before you are going in, because you will get demotivated if you don't. Now, the last thing I'm going to touch on is weaponry. A lot of people have actually asked me in the past, they said, Yo, Serg, what, what weapon should I use? I can't find anything that suits me. I can't find anything that I really like, or that's effective enough for me to like it. And honestly, some weapons I would recommend for beginners are any of the katanas are quite good. They're very friendly weapons. They they have good move sets that don't expose you too much. They have good damage. They have good scaling. They have a lot of good shit. And I would definitely recommend any of the katanas, preferably the Uchi katana or the Ayato. Uh, the Chaos Blade, I believe, is the best katana. So any of those weapons will do you well, and uh, the better you get, the wider variety of weapons you can start testing out and experimenting with. I personally like to use the Zweihander quite a lot, but it is a relatively hard weapon to use, so I don't advise people to use that straight off the bat. Some things I wouldn't advise you to use are spears. Spears are defensive weapons, and when you use a spear, you are, again, limiting yourself. You are not really going to be able to use the techniques that you want because there's just no time for you to do that because you're too busy hiding behind a shield or whatever and the move sets are a little bit vague and boring so to say so a zweihander maybe any of the katanas yeah sure why not the claymore the bastard sword the lizard great sword i'm not sure what it's actually called uh, the flamberge as well or the flamberg all those weapons are very good uh and I would definitely recommend you use one of those instead of anything else to begin with. Uh, after you have experimented with the weapons I have named, you will feel more confident and you will be able to move on to maybe more weapons that require a little bit more skill or they're harder to use if you want to challenge yourself. And uh, yeah, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed. Please do share this video, like it, everything. I've never put so much fucking time into a video. Honestly, I mean, my videos, I'm not saying I don't put effort into them, but I actually wrote a fucking script for this piece of shit, and holy shit, it took a while. You might realize that kind of my persona just broke, and I'm not as sophisticated as I was like 12 minutes ago, but yeah, guys, I'd appreciate if you guys did like this. I actually did put a lot of fucking effort into this, it took me like 5 hours, and I'm not actually joking, I don't know how I've managed to just do this all in one go, but honestly, share this video away, let's get people to get better at PvP so we could have better fights, better quality fights, more players and everything, just share it away guys, for the benefit of the game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, if you are new, thank you for checking this video out, if you did watch this far, type in ballsack noodles in the comments, uh, that's kind of a nice trend we have here, sorry about the fucking cars, they've been a huge problem this video, but I tried to keep my temper. Anyway, thank you for watching again guys, and I will see you later, bye bye.